this is an interesting story coming from the Supreme Court um, that is fascinating to me um, with regard to jury deliberations. Um, NPR did a, uh, an explainer today uh, that really goes into uh, by Nina Totenberg. It was actually a great segment um, that the U.S. Supreme Court today ruled that um, if there is clear evidence in a case that emerges after a jury verdict uh, that there was racial bias during deliberations, the trial judge must make an exception to the usual rule protecting the secrecy of deliberations in order to determine whether defendant was denied a fair trial. So in other words, uh, deliberations that are historically private and secret, if the judge who has access to those deliberations can't seize a clear example of racial bias, then the judge can release that information. Uh, and this was a five to three split uh, between um, uh, on the Supreme Court. Uh, Justice Kennedy, as usual, was a swing vote, uh, giving the majority. Um, Justice Anthony Kennedy said that racial discrimination is unlike other types of misconduct that may occur in the jury room because it implicates unique historical, constitutional and institutional concerns. All right. So the ruling came as a, a part of a case by uh, concerning Min, Min, uh, Miguel Pino Rodriguez. Um, he was a horse trainer arrested in 2007. Uh, two teenage girls identified him as the man who groped them in a darkened restroom at a horse barn. Um, at trial, the prosecution rested on its case, rested its entire case rather on the victim's identification of the defendant, pointing him out. Uh, the defense highlighted in the short time the girls actually saw the attacker. Uh, the defense also highlighted. Um, um, and I, actually, before I go on, I want to point the emphasis there. Right. There was a limited window of opportunity for them to see the attacker. Um, and this is what the defense actually outlined. But uh, the jury was initially deadlocked. Uh, and after 12 hours of deliberations, the delivery, the, the, the jury rather deliberations found the defendant guilty on two misdemeanor counts. But they failed to reach an agreement on the felony. Um, two of the jurors told the defense lawyers that during deliberations, one of the other juries, jurors uh, repeatedly expressed a bias against the, def uh, the defendant. And his alibi because of his race, because of his ethnicity. A lot of people assume somehow that juries can be impartial, that they don't go in with implicit biases. In the reality of it, that's just not true. Every a jury of your peers necessarily means a jury of your peers and their implicit biases. And so this is a fascinating decision. Um, the Supreme Court declared that the central purpose of the 14th Amendment uh, was to guarantee equal protection under the law. Uh, and it was aimed to eliminate discrimination emanating from uh, official sources in the states. Um. It would not, according to Justice Kennedy in his in his uh, uh, writing, he said it would not rid the jury system of every irregularity. But, quote, the same cannot be said about racial bias, a familiar and recurring evil that if left unaddressed would risk systemic injury to the administration of justice. <laughs> this this is an important, fascinating case because even though the precedent and what they're, they're ruling will not reach this far, I want to make sure I give this disclaimer. It does not go beyond prop, uh, similar cases. But it's an acknowledgement from the highest court that there are systemic biases and uh, systemic problems of race in our judicial system. This is from the highest court of the land Whereas we have politicians who routinely dismiss this notion. We have district attorneys who routinely dismiss this notion. We have people, political pundits and political opportunists who would have you to believe that simply because the jury found somebody not guilty, a police officer not guilty, or they found a black man guilty or a black woman guilty or a Hispanic man in this case guilty, that this means justice has been served. 
the Supreme Court is saying, hold on, that's not necessarily the case because a judge who has access to these deliberations can look to see if there was actual evidence of biases and then it could be addressed from, a, from that perspective. I think this is, this is going to turn out to be one of the more significant um, cases with regard to the acknowledgement of systemic, of the systemic nature of racial bias and how it infects like a plague our judicial system because every step of the way, people who we automatically, and not me, hopefully not you, but people automatically imbue this sense of no, no, nobleness and, and purity and honor and integrity on our judicial process, even on our police officers, but all the way to the jury so that they have the ability to say justice was served and Justice Kennedy and the other uh, the four other justices are saying that's not necessarily the case. We should review it after um, the deliberations show some indication of a racial bias. And I think that's a fascinating story. We should see what happens with the next.